So as ever, I'm super delighted to have with me my son and my business partner, Mike Bayer. Um, we do actually talk to each other every day, but not very often we sit together in this more formal environment and do a podcast episode. And it's always such a pleasure to do so. So welcome. Yeah, it's, it's nice to be back. It has been quite some time since I was uh, able to grace the listeners of uh, the <laughs> Vacation Rebel Success podcast. Um, yeah, I've been very, very busy in the, the back end of things and uh, super busy with the new website and a lot of the other programs and, and activities we have going on. But it is wonderful to be back here again today to talk about education, you know, which is what we do here at Vacation Rentals Formula Business School. <laughs> yeah, well, if we're talking about getting help you know what do you do when you want to get some help and and this has been it's not this is not something new this eagerness to uh, to find some help i think everybody does it at some point and when i started 25 odd years ago it was it was super difficult to get any help because there was absolutely nothing out there and everybody wanted to keep their secrets they didn't want to share and and now do you know it's almost as difficult because now there's so much there's so yeah. many people out there offering their help, whether it's paid or unpaid or, or whatever, that, you know, how, how the heck do you find your way through it? There's a ton of noise. And, and, and that's the thing is, is, is everybody's learning that the key to any kind of business online is to get out there with tons of content and be, you know, larger than life. Um, you know, a lot of people are teaching this whole fake it till you make it thing. And it's, uh, it's pretty scary when you, you know, if you're, especially if you're committing, you know, some of your hard earned money and your budget to consulting or coaching or any of these things. And, and then you find out that you, you know, you've, you've wasted your money because they, they don't have the, the depth of knowledge that you need, uh, to help your business. But that's what we're going to cover today. We're going to figure all this out. Well, I want to I want to start off by just sharing my own experience of of trying to find some help. So I've just found this new software for uh, editing audio and video called Descript. And I just absolutely love it because for anybody who knows anything about audio and video editing, you usually get this this timeline that you have to you have to play with and cut out some bits of audio and insert your bits of video, um, things like um, Camtasia and ScreenFlow. And then there's some other really mega video editing packages that you can spend years learning. This uh, software proclaims that you can get in and start editing within, within minutes. And so, so I leapt at this, and in fact, it's actually really, really working. Um, what you do with this is just edit the transcript. But the thing was, is that there is so much in this program, and I do want to learn it all. And I'm really, really struggling getting help to when I've got a little bit, a little question. You know, how do I do this one thing, or why does this not work? And I, I'm spending a lot of time on Google trying to find out the answers to these questions. And I've got random videos and random tutorials. What I'm looking for is sort of step-by-step -step instruction, a course uh, on how to use Descript. And there isn't one out there. But that's my particular learning style. That's how I go about it. What about you, Mike? When, when you're trying to learn something, how best do you do it? I mean, I am, I have a big weakness, uh, you know, and maybe this is a typical male thing. It's like guys who don't read instructions to put together IKEA furniture. <laughs> um, it's pretty much the same with me when it comes to software. I, I, I like to, to do a lot of trial and error. Um, I like to get hold of something and, and just play with it. Uh, and then when I get stuck, I then look up the, um, you know, specific questions as to the challenges I'm having. Uh, right now, you know, with the launch of the new version of the Vacation Rental Formula Business School website, uh, th this has been a huge learning curve for me because we've transitioned from 15 years of using WordPress to build our, our website to moving across to a new platform called Webflow. And Webflow is just so much different. And so, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of learning to happen. And, and I've just been getting in there and just kind of playing um, and, and then discovering the, tu the tutorials to, uh, to answer specific questions. Now, I also find one of the easiest things to do is get involved with the community surrounding products. 
Um, something that we have with the Vacation Rental Formula Business School is we have a great free Facebook community um, where we have a lot, we send a lot of people to is to go and ask your peers. Uh, you know, if you're, you know, specifically with our business, with the short term rental business, um, you know, when you have a specific problem in your business, community is one of the best places to go because a lot of people have these same problems. But when you have a specific tool that you're using, um, it's always great if you can find a community related to that tool. Um, and I would I would say there's got to be a descript um, community uh, that you can find because not only will you find other people using the tool, you'll also find the people who are marketing themselves as consultants or coaches for that tool um, or people who will do it for you. Um, mm -hmm. Those are great places to go. I, I know that uh, in our business, when we first got our the big clunky Matterport camera and we started taking it out and doing the uh, doing the video walkthroughs of uh, of properties and i i really struggled to figure out how to get everything to work and how to do it properly once i once i'd learned it it was fine and then my business partner craig he was the one that was you know the moment he had a, a question straight into the community and he would find somebody who'd already asked that question and the answer was usually there so you're absolutely right um, you mentioned our Facebook group. That's the business of short-term rental and property management. That will be a link to that on the show notes. Uh, we're at 4,100 4, 4, and something members in there now. And we have a lot of active members that are super, super helpful when anybody's got a question. I, I'm just amazed sometimes how many or how quick people are to jump in, first of all. And how comprehensive they are with their with their help that they're freely offering. That definitely wasn't there for me twenty odd years ago. Yes, yeah, so I mean it's certainly a lot. It's a lot easier to uh, to find those um, those answers. Um, I mean, having said that, there's also the flip side that you know, as we all know, with social media, everybody thinks that they're the expert. Um, and, you know, and this is where we get into, you know, having to be mindful of when you're taking advice through community forums like that. Um, or even if you're, and we're going to get into this in a minute to so talk about um, consultants, is to ensure that the people you're getting the advice from actually have a background. Um, you know, they have some experience and they're speaking from experience um, rather than, you know, a, uh, an opinion that they have formed from lots of things that they've read. Um, so I think that's always re really careful. You know, I think we're learning more and more in society now to be more careful about the things that we're reading and listening to um, and ensuring that we are kind of um, background checking, you know, these sources to ensure that they are, you know, they're valid and actually can provide you with useful information. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. And, uh, you know, I'd mentioned in the introduction that you, you can go to LinkedIn and you look at the profiles of, of you look, look at short term rentals or Airbnb and and you'll find that so many people have the words coach or consultant or training in their profile. And this, this, as you say, this is what we're going to be talking about is how do you sift through all that? So I wanted to start by looking at those three terms, coaching, consulting, training, and maybe we'll throw in mentoring as well, because, you know, some people think that they're completely interchangeable. And each one will solve somebody's problems in the same way. But in fact, the methods are really different. And I, I did some Googling on this. I did, you know, anyone can do this. Look up the difference between coaching and consulting. And the response that I got that really resonated with me was consulting tells your people what to do. You hire a consultant because you want answers to the questions. You haven't been able to find those answers. And the consultant is going to come along and say, OK, they might not tell you do one thing, but they might give you some different options. And you're actually um, hooking into all their experience and their network of, of, the, of the people they know and the things that they know. Whereas coaching is more, if you've got a coach, that coach is going to ask you some provocative questions and get you to come up with the answers yourself. And I've I've been through this. We I mean we had a coach, Mike, didn't we? When uh, a mm -hmm. business coach um, about ten years ago, and it was really really helpful. But I I found that a little bit challenging at first because it was it was the questions that I found to be quite difficult to answer. Do you remember that? 
Yeah, because I think they ask you to dig deep. Um, I mean, it's always I found for, for us as a, a, you know, having a business partnership, um, you can get very set in your ways very, very quickly um, in terms of how you're running your business, how you're planning your goals, your operations. Uh, and sometimes, you know, a coach can come in and just, you know, with a few pointed questions and from a third third party perspective, they can really help to, you know, help you pivot they can help you define a little bit of a different route to head in and they can also help to dispel some of those uh preconceived notions that you had about your business like you already had this plan in your head this is the way i'm going this is where i'm going to do it and a coach will go ah that's a pretty good plan but have you thought about this plan um Mm -hmm. and and again that that um i find that um differentiation between consulting and coaching is 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 very close um consultants i find you know anywhere through our business there are a handful of tipping points um as you are growing um and it's i find that when you get to those tipping points it's trying to figure out how you are going to proceed how am i going to take the next leap in my business um and that's where you need a consultant you need a consultant who's been there before and can say okay these are all your options open to you this is the way you can go ahead these are the things i would recommend you do um whereas the coach they're not necessary they're going to be the ones you know cheering you on as you're making those changes you know keeping you accountable keeping you um keeping you up to speed on your plan uh, and I think that's um, is, is is really important to recognize that those tipping points in your in your short term rental business career is when you should be looking for the for this help. Yeah, I it was probably about mm, ten or twelve years ago that we reached a tipping point in our business. We were probably at about sixty properties, and we my my business partner Craig and I decided that we really needed some help. You know, where do we go from here? Do we Do we invest in a much bigger and more expensive software, um, property management software? Do we hire somebody full time or do we take on some part timers, some virtual virtual staff? And that was sort of the beginning of the whole VA revolution, if you like. Um, How how can we uh, differentiate ourselves from our competition? And then there were some of these questions and we went in entirely the wrong direction. Um, and I think we we're trying to take a cheap route because the the local chamber of commerce uh, offered relatively, or I say relatively inexpensive. We paid $3,000 for our, for our consultancy way back 15 years ago. And, but this was somebody who knew nothing about our business and she came and spent three hours with us, asked us a lot of questions to learn about the business. And then two weeks later, came up with a report which told us absolutely nothing um, that we didn't already know. It was, it was quite the expensive mistake to make. One thing, she's, um, one thing we, were, we were wanting to talk about was how do, should we be a full-time year-round business in a seasonal market? Because we're very much a seasonal market in Ontario? And should we continue to market and keep our staff on board through the winter? These are the questions that we were we were wanting to know. And she came back and she said, oh, this is just a mom and pop business. It's seasonal. It's just June and July. Lay off all your staff for the rest of the year. And you know, I've never, really, she said, you're never going to make money out of this business. Um, I've never forgotten that experience because it was it was very disillusioning when we got this report. And not only that we'd spent a lot of money on something that was that was particularly useless, and we we'd made an error at the beginning in who we hired um but also because she wasn't giving us the answers that we wanted uh, and you know that that may be two pronged because it, she, it it was it's possible that she could have come up with that answer and it was it was right, but in fact it proved we we proved her wrong anyway but it it just went to show how important it is to make those choices right at the beginning if you're going to spend the money on that type of um of help yeah and and, and it comes down to definitely finding somebody who knows your industry you know knows you know other people you know have worked for and with other people who have been through similar problems so that that way they have the experience to um to fall back on 
to to give you that you know somebody else did this this is how it worked for them somebody else did that that's how that worked for them you know that is where the the, the value comes in of, of hiring a consultant and or a or a coach who's actually specific you know they have been in those shoes and that's the, that's the thing that we're seeing across the the short-term rental in- industry now is that you have as you said earlier on linkedin there are countless people marketing themselves as coaches and consultants and you look back through their LinkedIn history and they've, you know, they started renting, you know, 18 months ago, you know, they started, you know, with, with Airbnb uh, during COVID. Um, and all of a sudden now they, they're marketing themselves as, as an expert. Now, uh, you know, they may have some nuggets, they may have uh, some wisdom, um, but are you going to get the value that you need for, from your business from that? So it, it is imperative that you do your due diligence and and look at the background history. Connect with these coaches for a free um, consultation, you know, a 30-minute chat to find out if they're the right person from you and get them to offer some um, uh, some references. Uh, bear in mind the references they're going to give you are going to be obviously clients that they've worked really well with and, and you know, everything's been peachy um but at least you can you can ask those those clients some or those uh, references some questions as to you know what was your experience like how did the process go so you can be a little bit more prepared before you make that decision and don't ever go for one consultant at a time like make sure you're interviewing two or three um to try and figure out which one is going to work best with you because that relationship that you're going to build mm-hmm. with a consultant or a coach is, is again really important like if you if you're working with somebody who right off the bat you just kind of you know, it just doesn't feel right, but you want to give them the benefit of the doubt because they, you know, this is their job. Um, I mean, I, th- I think you've got to go with your gut sometimes. Uh, you've got to go with how it feels. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, this business coach that we had, we just had this one three-hour sit-down and then a report two weeks later. That was mm-hmm. it. And and I remember when we worked with Bob Sparkins, it was it was over a period of months. Yeah. And we met, we met every month and – we were held accountable as to what we were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was more coaching than consultancy because you know, Bob didn't wasn't in our business at the time, mm-hmm. um, you know, our specific business, but he he knew enough to to coach us through it. But it was a lot of it was personal development in 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 our relationship, I think. Um, and I think I'm still getting the benefit of that ten years later. Mm-hmm. I, I can I can recommend to anybody listening to this who is in a business partnership, wh- whether it be with family or just you, you're in a partnership with with other business owners. Um, I highly highly recommend business coaching for for as a as a team. It's it's almost like uh, therapy um, for your business <laughs> um, to have a third party come in and kind of be able to help ascertain where the strengths and weaknesses are on the team. Um, and you'll be surprised sometimes that you know. I mean, I was put in my place a couple of times. It's like, stop doing these things that, you know, that they're not making you any more money. Um, just because you like to do them and, you, you know, <laughs> you end up holding on too tight to certain aspects of the business. Sometimes you just have to let go and either hire somebody for that role or share that responsibility with somebody else. Uh, mm-hmm. And th- those are some of the things that we took out of that business coaching. It was super valuable. And that was that was definitely business coaching rather than consultancy. There was a very you know, clear delineation between what Bob was doing and perhaps what um, a consultant would have done because a consultant may have come in and said, okay, the direction of your company is this is where you should be going. Mm-hmm. And, or, or I'll give you two choices of, as to where you should be going and I'll work with you on whichever one you choose. Um, but yes, that, the, the coaching with Bob was, was very much on the, uh, on the personal development and relationship side and uh, loved and that, it. Loved and that's, it. A, that's a good, another good look at the differentiation between the two. A consultant needs to have in-depth knowledge of your industry um, to be able mm-hmm. to give you advice as to what the next steps are. Whereas a coach doesn't. Uh, I feel yeah. a coach is, is more of, has the ability to get you to think outside of yourself, um, to be able to look at problems differently. Uh, and it doesn't nece- they don't necessarily have to be specific to the short-term rental industry to mm-hmm. be able to provide you with incredibly valuable um, direction. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A consultant need, needs to have that know-how in, you know, in, in a few fields or in a particular field. So for example, a revenue management consultant could, adv- you know, could advise you on how to get data and ways to interpret it. 
and then they might recommend a strategy for that client to get results. But one thing, um, and I know you wanted to approach this, Mike, that having a consultant work with you is not is not a done for you. Yes. And I think that is something that a lot of people fall foul of is, is they hire a consultant thinking that, oh, you know, I'm going to hire this person for three, four, five thousand dollars and they're going to do all this for me. That's not the way consultants work. I mean, consultants may have some tools to make things easier for you. Um, they will be able to, you know, maybe give you some templates, um, things like that. But generally speaking, a consultant is there to guide you to be your guide in, 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 in your vacation rental journey um, and walk you through the steps that you need to do uh, based on their experience with other businesses. Um, they will give you, an, well, you will work with them to create a set of tasks that you're going to accomplish. Um, and then you're going to work through those tasks between then and the next meeting. Um, and again, that consultant will try and hold you accountable to, um, to what you said you're going to do um, and, and, and ensure that you're actually implementing uh, as well, but but they're not going to do anything for you. I think that's a really really important part, important aspect to get across. Yeah, good point. Okay, let's move on to training because that's that's the third part. You know, training teaches a skill so that people know how to do something. Mm -hmm. So consulting is telling people what to do. Uh, coaching is helping people do what they want to do or, or helping them find what they want to do. And training teaches them how to do it. So. The important part to me about finding good training is to understand that that is to find training that's going to fit within my learning style. So because everybody has different learning styles, a good training should meet lots of different learning styles. So your learning styles are kinesthetic, more hands on. Um, they're aud auditory. People like to listen, learn and listen. There's read and write. And then there's visual. So a good training is going to have all of those elements. You know, you're going to be able to follow along with somebody. You're going to be able to fill in a workbook and do that read write type of um, of learning. You're going to listen. So there'll be an auditory component and there'll be, of course, videos for that video component. So if you are very if you're a very specific, if you've got a very specific learning style, then you're going to look for a training course that is going to meet that learning style. So, you know, if you're very visual, then you want something that's just very focused on on video rather I mean, than anything else. Something that we can, uh, you know, if you're listening to this podcast right now, um, typically you are going to be an auditory learner. Uh, if you listen to this podcast on a regular basis, um, you this is obviously a medium that you like or prefer. Maybe you are listening to this and it's like, God, I, I just I wish I could kind of see Mike and Heather and I could see their faces. Well, then you can go to our YouTube account and you can watch this. Uh, we we upload uh, almost all of these interviews as YouTube videos as well. If you didn't know, um, then if you you know if you prefer to read, um, you can go to the show notes and we include the transcripts for these episodes, um, as well as um, some show notes with links. Um, so you can actually read through what we covered in the episode. And quite a lot of the time, if you know if the episode has something to do, we may have a download for you to download and and, and work through. Um, you know, so so that's one of the things we really try and do here at Vacation Rental Formula Business School is to make sure we're covering all those learning uh, those learning styles. So so having taken those different roles apart, the coaching, the consulting, the training, um, mentoring we didn't really cover. Um, I've talked about that in in some previous um, episodes. But mentoring is usually an unpaid relationship. Um, you know, your mentor is more of a guide. Um, we're going to be exploring this in, in greater detail as we get towards the Women's Summit because I'm working with some, some great leaders in this industry to bring the personal development um, track to the Women's Summit. And part of that is going to be sessions on mentoring, how to find a mentor. And a mentor is somebody who guides you along the way. I'll give you an example. I mean, years and years ago, I got interested in hypnotherapy because I was seeing a practitioner and I liked the results I was getting. So as I do, I decided that I wanted to be one. So I wanted, I, I wanted to get into the field of counseling and, and hypnotherapy. So my hypnotherapist became my mentor and he guided me in the direction of the courses I needed to take. So he suggested different courses 
different people that he knew. Um, so it was more of a, almost a career guidance, if you like. Um, and then throughout my training, then he continued to guide me and steer me in the, you know, in the right direction career wise uh, after that. So, uh, so that, that's just touching briefly on mentorship. You had a mentor, Mike, when, uh, when you were a volunteer firefighter and looking to get into the uh, full-time firefighting. Yeah, I mean, that's very, very common uh, in, uh, if, if, for anybody looking to get hired in the fire service is that, you know, typically somebody knows somebody, um, either a, a friend, a relative, um, or even, you know, if you've crossed paths with um, um, somebody who's been a professional firefighter for a few years and you, you meet them on a course, you strike up a relationship and you just ask, you know, is it okay if I bounce some questions off you? Uh, as it turned out, I ended up um, having a mentor who was the chief training officer for a, a good sized department here in, in Ontario. Um, and yes, uh, I ended up uh, reaching out to um, uh, this individual and, and he was incredibly helpful to guide me as to, uh, you know, where to go, the courses to take, how to prepare for interviews, how to prepare for the exams, um, and how to, you know, prepare myself and my resume to, to make myself, um, you know, more appealing to, to be hired by a full-time fire department. And I think that, you know, in, in our industry, in, in the short-term rental industry, um, quite often you don't realize if you, if you attend conferences and, and you network and you meet people, quite often you, if you, if you don't maintain those relationships, I think you're losing out on a big opportunity for natural peer mentors. Um, you know, where you can, there's nothing wrong with like meeting somebody new at a conference who's either at a, at a similar step to you, or maybe they are, you know, a few levels above you in terms of, you know, they're where you want to be. There's nothing wrong with, with having a chat with them and just, you know, form a relationship and, you know, having a chat once a month and throwing some questions backwards and forwards. And those can be very natural relationships. You don't necessarily have to seek somebody for a paid mentorship. Um, and I think it's just a matter of being comfortable with being vulnerable. Uh, I think there's a lot of people out there who are just nervous to, you know, to talk to people and say, I don't know this or I don't know that. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, we're all in this together. I see this all the time in our Facebook group um, is, is the amount of people who just jump up and, and are willing to overshare, um, you know, at no cost. They, they'll, they could spend half an hour writing that post and gr grabbing some links and because they just love to do it. They just love to help. Mm -hmm. And I think when you find those people, it's like be respectful of them. Obviously, they're giving up their time to help you out. Um, but those are great relationships to nurture over time. And, and you'll have great fun together. That Your mentor will have great fun. Um, you know, hearing about you and your business and, and, and how you're growing and, and, and vice versa is, you know, you, you may bring your business up to, you know, the level that, that they're at and, you, you know, you become, um, you know, just helping each other out at that point. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you, you become peers then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what you have to do uh, if you are looking for some help, you know, you've got to, to start, start by deciding what you want, you know, where do you want to be with this in three months, in six months, in a year? And it may not be just in business, but in personal development as well. So take some time, write something down. Put, put those goals and objectives down. Uh, what, would be, what would be the ideal outcome of having some consultancy or having some coaching or, or going through some training. You know, think about whether you want to get unstuck or, or do you want to, somebody to actually tell you what to do next? And then, of course, if you're a leader as well, you know, think about how you can use this to help your staff develop. You remember when I, we, we took Caitlin on, Mike, as our marketing assistant mm -hmm. in, um, in Cottage Link. And she had a, a diploma in marketing, but she really didn't have any knowledge of the rental business or tourism at all. And, and I spent hours looking for a course that would, that would help her out, that would teach her the foundations of, of the business. Because I think everybody that comes in this business needs to know the foundations of it. They need to know the history. You know, go back to the 1990s or, or maybe even earlier you know, those days before Airbnb. And I think it's important that people know, particularly when we're talking about something like direct booking, we're trying to teach somebody what direct booking is, that actually that was the norm mm -hmm. before Airbnb came along. So 
you know, just just think about what you might want to put your staff through, whether you want to put them through training or or do you want to have somebody to come in and coach them or do you want to coach them? But uh, it, I think it's really worthwhile getting all this down on paper. Think about what do you actually want? What do you want to learn? What do you want to change? And what? how do you want your business to look? I think uh, we mentioned or we mentioned earlier on in this this episode is is you know and 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 it goes hand in hand with you know planning out what you want for the future um and I think you also have to look inwardly as well like assessing your business where you're at is 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 going to help you determine where you want to go but also assess yourself um assess what your strengths and weaknesses are um we have like one of our courses that we have the short term rental entrepreneurship course uh, is is a great one to really help define um, who you are as a short term rental business professional. Um, we have a great um, uh, personality test in there that kind of helps to, helps you realize what some of your strengths and weaknesses are and where to find help. So if you're if you're trying to hire staff, you need to hire staff that complement um, you know some of your weaknesses. Uh, because that's how a, a great team works. If you have a team where, you know, I joke uh, in the fire service, um, you know, people ask me about um, um, female firefighters. Oh, what's it like with working with a female firefighter? And I say that at the end of the day, as, as a firefighter on, on a fire truck, we're a toolbox on wheels. Our job is to go and solve problems. If you have four hammers on a fire truck, there's only a certain number of things you can do. But if you have tools who are able to think differently and do things differently, the more variation you can have, the better. And that's no different in a vacation rental business. You need to have um, a diverse group of people as part of your team. If you have, you know, clones of yourself, I mean, we always joke that, oh, I just want more, more of myself. No, you don't. That's actually the, the last thing you want. You want people who are able to look at things differently, look at problems differently, look at the operations of your business. Um, um, and, and, that, and again, consultants and coaches will help you, you know, talk about those same things. It's like, how do you find somebody who is your opposite? Um, because that's very hard to do. It's very hard to hire somebody who's your opposite. Um, and you may butt heads. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, uh, it helps you to have a much more rounded business. Yeah, certainly. I, I I fell into it twice in two of my businesses um, that I took on business partners who were complete opposites of me because I'm I'm all, I've got my head in the clouds. I uh, I'm a strategic thinker, love big ideas. big ideas, and and I needed somebody to be down in the dirt, looking at the details and telling me that things perhaps wouldn't work, and you know what the shortcomings of some of these ideas were. So yeah, you you make some very good points. Um does it sell uh, more chickens? There. Does it sell more chickens? Yeah, that 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 is that is a quote that came to me from a business partner years ago when I got uh, so excited about my strategic thinking and we should do this and we should do that and we should buy this and buy that and he said when it comes down to it all you need to ask yourself is does it sell more chickens? Yes. Think about that one. Okay, Mike, we've got some exciting news to, I mean, there's three things. And I think the first one I just want to talk about is Consultants Corner, mm -hmm. because we've been talking about, you know, how you find the right people for, um, for, for when you need help. Um, we want to bring some of the best into Vacation Rental Formula Business School and create an area on the website where you can go and see their profiles, see what they do, see um, see my, me interviewing them and some of their clients, which I think is super important. It's what we do with Vendor Showcase on the Virtual Vendor Showcase on the website if you haven't been there. But uh, tell them a bit more about the Consultants Corner and what we're trying to do with this, Mike. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, um, I mean, before we even cover that, I mean, let's say that Anytime you have a problem or concern with your short term rental business, I'm hoping that as listeners of the Vacation Rental Success podcast, you know, Heather's here every single week for you with great new information. But if you need an answer now, head across to vacationrentalformula.com, go to the contact us and just ask the question um, or join the, our free Facebook group, the, uh, the short term rental. Um, the business of short-term rental and property management Facebook group, because again, we can get back to you right away. Um, the reason for creating this consultant's corner 
um, is a little bit of our concern, I guess, of looking across the industry of the the nurus. Um, it's, it's a bit of a derogatory term, but it's, it's the new gurus. It's, we mentioned earlier the people who have been in business for you know eighteen months, two years, and they're they're branding themselves as you know a consultant coach for the short term rental space, and you know how they can help you with your business. Now, I think what we're hoping to do with Consultants Corner is to you know, showcase some really high level consultants who have been around for a while. They know the, the business, they've had clients um, across all levels of the business. Um, and if you're looking for, you know, you're at that one specific tipping point um, in your business, maybe you have a single property and you're looking now to, um, you know, find a consultant who can help guide you through the steps of moving into property management. Maybe you want to buy multiple, you know, invest in more properties. Maybe you're trying to scale your property management company to have, you know, go from 10 properties to 100 properties. Um, all these things require some, some guidance um, and some experience. And that's where these consultants come in. So that's our goal is to showcase some, some, um, some great consultants. And, and we invite you, if you are listening to this episode and you consider yourself to be a, um, a great consultant in the short-term rental space, is to reach out to us. Uh, again, head across to vacationrentalformula.com, go to the Contact Us page, and just fill out that contact form and let us know that you're there because we would love to connect with um, consultants in the business so we can begin to showcase your talents uh, and find you more clients. Yeah, exactly. And there are some great people out there. I know it sounds like we, we, we're writing off a lot, but there are some really amazing folks, you know, people who are who are very competent and professional in revenue management and in data collection and in operations because it's you know one person cannot do it all mm -hmm. um so you might want to have if you've got a problem in a specific area then you might want a very specific person or you do you might want a, a generalist so i just wanted to get that one out of the way second announcement is um for the tipping point yes and we mentioned, you explain that one. Well, we, we've mentioned that phrase quite a few times in this episode. Um, is the the, the tipping point, um, and something that you know we've been, and this is what episode five hundred and nine, or is it five hundred and ten? I can't remember. Uh, anyway, we're well over five hundred episodes of the short term of the Vacation Rental Success podcast, um, and we've been thrilled to provide um, years of of this same format with interviews and Heather having solos. Uh, but what we have, you know, we've been listening to some feedback from our listeners, and one of the things that um, came across is, is to have more bite-sized um, episodes with a, a focus on certain aspects of the business. You know, not not so quite uh, wide ranging. Uh, a lot of interviews they tend to flow all over the place. Um, so as of uh, Monday, September fourth, uh, we'll be adding an additional episode each week to the podcast. So the the, the 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 numbers won't change um but this episode will be short it'll be uh 10 to 20 minutes long max uh and will be very singularly focused on teaching you one aspect of the business uh there'll be some episodes that will be solo with heather or myself or, or jason our um uh, head of technology or we'll be finding experts um, who are very well versed in that particular topic of interest for that episode. Um, the, it's not really going to be interview format. It's going to be very much a teaching format. Um, we're going to be including video um, and slides with all of these episodes. So if you wanted to see the slides, uh, you can head across to YouTube, where we'll again be publishing the episode on YouTube. Uh, and we'll also be having, with many of the episodes, a download to go with them uh, to enable you to, you know, if you're out in the car, or if you're running or walking the dog, there'll be something for you when you get back to actually, uh, you know, get into the, the do level. Like we want to do something and begin to put some of these learning points into action. Um, so, yeah, so we're very excited about this. And, yes, yeah, so Monday, September 4th will be our first episode. Uh, I'm very excited to get your feedback, and, and we would love to hear from you um, at any time. Um, so please let us know how we're doing and let us know what you think about this new episode uh, or this new series called The Tipping Point. Yeah, and just as a, as a teaser, the first episode that's coming out on September the 4th is is about creating a business plan. And if you listen to the podcast enough, you've you've heard me talk about this on a number of occasions, that 
it, it wasn't really until we began planning on selling our company that I realized that we've, we'd never really had a business plan in place. And we put one, we, we started a bus- our business plan 15 years into our business. And we never looked back after that because we updated it every year. And by the time we got to sell the company, that business plan became the blueprint for our sales brochure. Mm-hmm. And, and if you've ever done a sales brochure for selling a company, you know, you have to dig, dig really deep. And uh, it was absolutely invaluable. So that this first episode is, is about 10, just over 10 minutes. And, and it's what you have to put in your business plan. And the download for that is going to be a business plan template so that you can take a look at that, create your own business plan. And even if you're 15 years into your business, you can start to create your business plan now and then update it every year. Mm-hmm. So that, that's the first episode. But that's, that's, that's just a taste of what's to come. So excited about this. Uh, it's been a long time in the making. Yeah, it's, it's going to be nice to, uh, for a little bit of a change, uh, a little bit more um, focused content for you guys as you're listening to the podcast uh, or if you prefer to watch on YouTube. Uh, we just want to be a little bit more concise and, and give you some real learning outcomes to have um, in uh, these episodes, which will go out every Monday. Yeah, and it's going to get us to 10,000 episodes quite quickly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the second announcement I want to make, and this, this again, has been a long time in the making. So as, you know, I mentioned in the, um, I mentioned in the introduction, you know, I, I, I was a consultant way, way back. Um, I had a training company, management consultancy, and I'd go out to small businesses and talk to them about, um, about growth, you know, how to grow and scale your business. Uh, it wasn't short-term rentals then. It was it was different businesses, mostly in the health uh, in the healthcare industry. But now I've sold my company. It's been 15 months since Cottage Link Rental Management um, was acquired. I am heading back to my comfort place, which is in training and consultancy. So I'm going to be offering, and this is a very limited offer. Um, because I'm just, it's pilot, really, a a pilot consultancy program. And I'm going to be offering five people, because I want to limit, as I said, want to limit this, uh, a consultancy program over six months. And that consultancy program will consist of of an initial 90-minute get-to-know-you and uh, session to establish what your outcomes, well, you know, what outcomes you're looking for, where you are now and where you want to be. And then there will also be five more hour long one-on-one sessions where you get my attention just fully for an hour each month, uh, where we will talk through specific issues that you're having and, and discuss what changes you can make and where you want to go. And then I'll be holding you accountable for it. So you'll get that email connection with me as well outside of those um, of those one-on-one sessions. We'll also be having a monthly mastermind with the cohort of uh, consultees, yeah. a cohort yeah. of pe- yes. business owners. <laughs> Business owners, so we'll all get together and we'll have hot seats and and some really good discussion on where everybody is and how we're all um, getting into our uh, business. And then there's a whole lot more after that. There's a whole lot more that's going to be included in this consultancy program. So where can people go and find out about this, Mike? So uh, for the time being, just while we're getting the uh, everything set up um, and getting the foundations in place for this, you can head across to vacationrentalformula.com forward slash consult. Uh, you can also look in the description uh, of this episode on your smart device, and there'll be a link there. Uh, we'll be including that link every week uh, from here on in. Uh, we'll have you um, fill out an application form um, to enable us to get back in touch with you if there's something you're interested in, um, and we will take it from there. Uh, we plan to kind of get this up and running by the end of September uh, and run for six months through October, November, December, January, February, March for the, our first cohort. Uh, so this will be an incredible start to your 2024 is to have this kind of support in your back pocket 
um, especially if 2024 is going to be your year to rock your short-term rental business. And we're going to be there for you um, for that small initial group. Uh, very excited. So again, head across to vacationrentalformula.com forward slash consult, um, and you can uh, get your name on the waiting list uh, and we will get an application to you. I am super excited about this. It's been, I, I always loved working one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with small businesses and, and just getting immersed in their business and helping them find the right, uh, the right route, I guess. So it'll be a mixture of consultancy, you know, this is what you should do, but there'll also be some coaching in there as well, because, you know, it's really important that everybody gets unstuck because we all get stuck at some point and there'll be some coaching through getting you through some getting rid of some limiting beliefs and moving forward and then we'll be recommending some training uh within the vacation rental formula business school and as part of the consultancy program you get lifetime membership of the uh, vacation rental formula business school and all the training that's going to be in there as well yeah i think it's, it's a phenomenal package and uh, uh we hope uh we'll be providing you more information as the weeks go on um but yes this, this will be a, a big step forward um, for us, um, we have always uh, provided training uh, in, in a much wider scope, um, but this is going to be great to get into uh, the more one on one. Uh, and that's one of our goals moving forward is, is to become more accessible to you, our listeners, um, our readers of the blog, uh, our watchers of our videos is to become more available to you, answer your questions and try and get those challenges resolved for you as quickly as possible. So that's it. That's a few announcements there. There's the consultants corner. So we are looking for consultants. And um, once we've got those, they will be, I'll be working with them to, um, to develop their pages on the, uh, on, in consultants corner. Then there's a tipping point and then there's the consultancy program. So we are, we're really uh, setting the course for the remainder of this year and into 2024 through this. And uh, I'm still working on producing some really good additional courses right now, as well as working with some great experts in um, developing some co-branded courses too. So that's to come as well over the next three months. Good stuff. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a busy end to 2023 for us, um, but you guys will get to reap all the benefits. Indeed. Indeed. So anything else you want to add, Mike? I think that's been sort of a, a packed yes, um, it's, episode. Yes, it's been a great episode. And uh, I mean, what I always uh, would kindly ask you to do is if, uh, you know, again, if you're out on a run or a walk or a drive, uh, obviously don't do it right now. But we would love it if you could just take a few minutes to go on to whatever device you're on, whatever platform uh, you're on, and just kindly leave a review for the podcast. Uh, we love your reviews. Uh, I think uh, we're up to nearly 300 reviews now, um, all of uh, you know four and a half stars or above. It really helps us out. It validates. Um, it really helps guide us moving forward. Um, and also your feedback. Any time that you wish to just reach out to us and let us know how we're doing, things you would like to hear, things you don't like, uh, all of it is good feedback. Um, so please head across to vacationrentalformula.com forward slash i believe it's contact us or our contact us page just drop us a line even if it's just to say hi and thank you or if it's just to say hey guys let's get to the point um all of those things are good so we just love hearing from you hey i i got one of those mike years ago yep. somebody said get to the point and stop talking about the weather yes <laughs> that's that's what i always used to open the podcast with with what the weather was like and you know i have stopped talking about the weather um it's very british so, so yes I do listen to you. I do listen to you. Um, so, uh, so that's it uh, for this week. Thank you so much, Mike, for joining me. Uh, we've got some really exciting stuff in to come and uh, looking forward to sharing all those things with everybody. Thanks for having me.